Across America, you're listening to the Veterans Impact Show, featuring stories of veterans who continue the mission in their communities with honor, courage, and commitment. Brought to you by Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, I'm your host, Jim Blythe, and joining me, the great, the one and only Marine Corps veteran, Chuck Wright. Good morning there, Marine. Good morning, North Texas. Well, thank you for being on uh, Facebook with us, and I got to tell you, we're starting this off as an offshoot of basically what we did with Alliance for the Brave that we started in 2015. So, Chuck... Tell everybody a little bit about where we're going and what the context is and what our vision is. So one of the things that uh, um, you and I have talked about and you and I have worked on uh, in various ways is the concept um, that we talked about in here of continuing the mission in the military. We call it Charlie Mike. Um, And and one of the things that we want to do is we want to support our veterans who are continuing the mission, who are the ones who are helping connect uh, fellow Americans, uh, helping support their fellow veterans, but providing the leadership that the military has always done. And it's interesting. We're not going to go too far down the Black History Month, um, but it's one of the things that I truly believe is nothing that ever happened in this country advanced the cause of the civil rights movement more than our military in both World War II and in Korea. It was shortly after World War II that President Truman integrated the military. But what happened was is you had organizations, um, the Rainbow Division, which was out of Hawaii, uh, made up largely of Asian Americans that fought in Italy and wound up being the most decorated division in history, you had the Tuskegee Airmen that have been made famous uh, that absolutely broke down stereotypes. And it, it, when you look at where American culture was uh, coming out of the Great Depression before World War II, we accepted segregation. We accepted that we had effectively a class system. And when men and women went to war together, guess what? They realize we all bleed red. We all share common values and common goals. Um, We all shared our own vision of the American dream. And it was the military that provided this avenue, this opportunity that kind of forced people together. But it also forced people to grow. And it's one of the things that, you know, one of the questions you want to ask me later, and we're going to talk about young people going into the military, but it was the one thing that I saw was people from all over the country getting together, working together for a common goal. Now, we fast forward more than than half a century from the civil rights movement. Um, Things are going a lot better. But we've still got a lot of divisiveness in this in this nation, and I truly believe it is our veterans who are largely leading the way, be it in politics, be it in society. Uh, and one of the things we want to do is we want to feature the stories. We want to feature the organizations. And I'm talking about groups like Carry the Load, Continue the Mission, Team Rubicon, and the list goes on and on and on. And these are all people that our, our listeners can look forward to hearing from. Some incredible stories uh, about what you can do, very simply, to make your world just a little bit of a better place. And and our veterans have. They have the leadership skills. They have the desire. They have the willingness. You know, every time, and and everybody's seen this, you go to start a new project. And about half the people go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's great, and don't do anything about it. And about half the people go, and I say half. It's about half. Um, Oh, no, yeah, that'll never work. Nobody will do it. But you know what? Are, are, there's is something in the D, DNA, something in the in the ethos of our veterans, of our warriors, that goes. I don't really care whether you think I can do it or not. I think I can do it. I'm going to go do it, and lo and behold, it gets done. 
Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. Chuck, to, to go back on what you're talking about, after World War II, we had the greatest economic boom the world has ever seen. Yep. But one of the biggest factors of that economic boom were the men and women <laughs> excuse me, who came back who had been a part of line leadership, yep. who understood leadership, who understood organizations and how to make organizations work because they'd had to do it. Yep. in the field in really trying conditions. It made such a huge change that those men and women led our nation financially and economically, and in many cases politically. Dwight Eisenhower came back. Actually, the civil rights legislation that got uh, done in 1964, he started in the 1950s, but it got shot down. Right. You, Culture has changed, and culture is continuing to change, and I agree with you. I think the military did so much to bring that about, but I think Vietnam, and I come back to, I'm a Vietnam veteran, we got isolated, we got separated, we got spit upon and called names. I think one of the important things that we're doing by telling these stories of men and women who've been enormously successful, who have led men like Clint Bruce been like Roger Staubach, the Staubach Company. Uh, Most people think of him as basically one of the greatest quarterbacks, but you know what? He's a Naval Academy graduate. He's a Naval Academy graduate. Extremely, extremely successful businessman. Um, Has made an absolute fortune. And let's face it, that's kind of how we measure business success. How much money did you make? Uh, has made a real difference in the North Texas community. And there are people like that. Chad Hennings, who's an Air Force Academy grad, is following very much in his footsteps, uh, doing a tremendous amount of work. But you're absolutely right. These are the people that really are. They're making a difference. Um, and there is a little bit of a difference with our post-9-11 guys. And, and one of the things, quite frankly, they have a, a huge advantage that our Vietnam veterans did not have. The Vietnam era, unfortunately, and, and, and I liken it to what's going on right now with the defund the police. The police have become the bad guys, which is one of the dumbest things we've ever heard. And, and we see the, the negative results of the cities that have actually done this. We blamed, during the Vietnam era, and the, the analogy is, is we blamed the veterans. We should have been blaming the politicians who ran the war completely wrong. And we can do another entire show about whether we should have been in Vietnam or not. Um, I have been over there. I have lived in the Orient. Uh, I have walked in countries like Thailand and Malaysia and the Philippines that are not communist countries because we made a stand in Vietnam. Um Korea is another perfect example. Um, Communism was evil and communism was trying to take over the world. And I know that seems a little bit simplistic, but it's absolutely true. And we stopped it. And now we see these moves starting up again. Um, But the point that I'm making is, is that whether you thought the war was good or you thought the war, I don't think the war is ever good. It's kind of, sorry, bad choice of words. But whether you thought the war was right or not doesn't change the fact that we blamed the veterans. We and, blamed the military. We yep. blamed the people who were yep. on the front lines who got sent. Yeah. Who got sent following by, orders by yeah. the politicians. Yeah. By the way, who is commander in chief of all the military forces? Uh, that would be James the, Johnson. Yeah. Okay, and we won't go into what my feelings are. So I want to go back, though, and I want to finish a thought that you were talking about civil rights because you talked about Ike, uh, but I want to talk about another legitimate war hero. Um, He was the first president that I remember, so obviously I'm dating myself. Um, But uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who legitimately, and if you don't know his story and what he did to save his crew, when uh, PT-109 was sliced in half by a Japanese destroyer. And it literally, it sounds like, oh, they ran them down. No, I mean, it was so black. It was so dark that night. They did not see the destroyer until it was literally on top of them. And I don't think the destroyer even knew it had hit the PT boat because they were made out of plywood. But, you know, the man who really did um, get the civil rights movement back on, on board uh, with Martin Luther King um, 
they were these young, iconic difference makers. In fact, I we should have had it. Uh, I absolutely loved his inauguration speech. Um, and I'll, I'll post it on our on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, you can rewatch the broadcast of this. Uh, but the one thing I'll do is I'm going to post a clip on there, and it was a whole bunch of us from uh, um, uh, from the American College veteran arm. Uh, I was a finalist for the Citizen Soldier Award, Soldier Citizen Award. Um, but we got to read parts of his inauguration speech, which was one of the shortest inauguration speeches ever given. But no one forgets this incredible line, ask not what your country can do for you. But ask what you can do for your country. See how well he picked up right on that. You gotta love it. It's almost like we're an old married couple. We finish each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been friends for a long time. And I want people to get to know you because everybody has we have really enjoyed being part of the Alliance for the Brave. And we're still associated with Alliance for the Brave, but we have spun off from Alliance for the Brave. So now Can we never say Alliance for the Brave again? Oh that's just it. Okay. <laughs> And here's where we're going now. Reunite, bring back together, yep. especially after the Vietnam uh, situation, and show people these wonderful leaders, men and women, who've done so much for this nation. Now, Chuck, speaking of great people, we've only got a few minutes before we go to a break. I want people to know a little bit about you. Now, Outside of the Marine Corps League and all of that, not everybody knows a great deal about you. You were a helicopter pilot, U.S. Marine. I was a Marine helicopter pilot. I was the first Marine officer commissioned for the University of Texas at San Antonio. Uh, I was um, school hadn't been uh, open 10, 15 years when I graduated, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I currently sit on the DFW USO board. Uh, thank you to my boy Matt Foster for, for connecting me. He is the chairman of that board, and Stephanie Melson is the executive director. Doing great work. We just opened a location at Love Field uh, to support and to serve our people. The USO is an incredible organization. Um, I also sit, uh, I am the vice chair of the Fund for Veteran Assistance with the Texas Veterans Commission. And we are right now in the process of um, evaluating and making recommendations to the commissioners uh, for about $30, $32 million in grants to veteran service organizations. Now, those grants in the past have gone to major organizations. I think uh, $600,000 went to EQuest. Several hundred thousand dollars went to carry the load, correct? Uh, No, we've never donated to carry the load. We have to uh, stay the course. And stay the course is the mental health arm of an organization that a lot of our North Texas listeners know. It was 22 Kill. It's now the One Tribe Foundation. And they will also be on the show, uh, especially stay the course, does a, a huge amount of work supporting our veterans and their spouses families uh, in the mental health arena, and we're going to have quite a few mental health shows. Now, you were the driving force behind the Gold Star Monument that got built here just a few months ago and was dedicated. That was fantastic. That was last Memorial Day, or or two weeks before Memorial Day last year. That was a huge project, and and basically it was run by, and you've got me going down the tangent, are we running? Are we running out of time. Are we getting close? We're we're going to be getting there in just a second. Okay, so I, I've got just right, we got about a minute. Got so. about a minute. So in sixty seconds, I'm going to tell the Woody Williams story. Woody Williams is World War II's last surviving Medal of Honor recipient, uh, an incredible Marine. He earned the Medal of Honor on Iwo Jima. Uh, please note that he earned it. He did not win it. There wasn't a contest. Uh, oh, okay. pet, pet peeve of mine, but he, uh, when he got out, he went to work. He retired from the Marine Corps. He went to work for the VA, retired from the VA. But while he was with the VA, he developed a strong. All right, here we go. Tell you what, let's do, Chuck. Let's bring this thought back when we come back. You're listening to the Veterans Impact Show. I'm Jim Blythe, and joining me, Chuck Wright, my co host and partner. We'll be right back after these words from all of our partners. Facebook. This, hey, is Facebook. Chuck, this is Chuck Wright, 
and the Blue Bird of Happiness, and I'm Jim Blaney. <laughs> and we're so thrilled that you're on board. We shared this out uh, to get it out to a lot of people, and we want to hear from you. So Chuck, give out your email where people can send you an email, the one you, you want to send out. Uh, you can reach me at info at, uh, or Chuck, either one, info at txvetcc.com. All right, say that again. TXVETCC.com, which is also the website of the Texas Veterans Chamber. And please, 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 it should be going live today. We have updated our Facebook. We are super excited about it. Um, but check it out. Um, but one thing you said, and I want to make sure that our listeners really know this. We're on the lookout. We certainly don't know every organization that's out there that's doing great work. Throw it in the Facebook um, message. Uh, send us an email. Uh, reach out to us and let us know about an organization that we need to feature on the show, that we need to tell that story um, to provide a little bit of uh, well, look morning, morning motivation, if you morning want. Morning motivation. Now, I tell you what, we are in Dallas, Fort Worth, but we are also carried on the USA Radio Network, and we're about to be picked up by a South Texas network that includes San Antonio. So we're really focusing here on the state of Texas, the Lone Star State, which is the second largest population of veterans in the United States. Indeed. Indeed. We've got a lot of veterans here. We have some great programs. Uh, some of our guests are going to be, uh, we're going to have different arms of the Texas Veterans Commission that's going to come in and uh, talk about what they do. Uh, the governor is committed to making uh, uh, veterans a big part of what he does. Uh, assuming he wins re-election, uh, the good news is, is that his opponents, on, at least one opponent on one side of the aisle, is uh, obviously a, a, a strong veteran himself. So Texas has always loved her veterans. Uh, well, so many of us, so many of us have, have served. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is a uh, this is a state that takes great pride in its heritage. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, for those who don't know, uh, we're going to focus more on this um, as we come back next week. We'll talk about this a little more. But we are in the middle of the path to Texas independence. Uh, years ago, we fought for independence, um, and I'm just going to throw a quick blurb out. People don't realize that Texas was not the only Mexican state that rebelled against the tyrant uh, Santa, Santa Anna, yeah, who had torn up the Constitution of 1824, trying to strip people of their rights. And at the end of the day, the, the, the thing that veterans do more than anything else is stand up for people's rights. Because people are always trying to push others around. That's just human nature, and it, it's, it's sad in a sense. But it gives our veterans an opportunity to step up and, and make it a real difference. In the that's, of that's, the that's it. Well, Chris is our engineer, great engineer. I am so glad to always have you on board. Yeah, I think. A, a man of many <laughs> words. A man of many <laughs> words. Uh, we will be going back uh, on the air on our broadcast in just a second on the radio. But here, right now, we want to thank you for being part of Facebook. We want to. Okay. Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And that's what we want to do, yep. is ask what can you do bring us back together absolutely and one of the reasons that we want to bring these veterans these veteran organizations onto the show is to give our listeners an opportunity to find organizations they want to plug into and help them out i'm actually having a conversation having coffee this week with a um, air force academy grad and she has 
gotten out and she's transitioning to a civilian job, but she's realizing that she wants to plug in. So what she's trying to do is she's interviewing different organizations to find out where she wants to plug in. And, you know, there's some great, great organizations oh, man. and great people who do great work. And it's not just about within the veteran community. What's the guy's name who runs 7-Eleven? He's a uh, academy graduate. West Point graduate, and you would ask me that, and I cannot remember his name. But he's a great leader. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and you absolutely see people in positions like that. Um that are applying their military leadership training and their skills to run in organizations. And this is the thing, actually one of the things, and we talked about this a lot way back when we uh, first started together on the, on the air. Um, 2015. 2015. Yeah, we're getting old, man. Um, it's been a while. But yeah. uh, um, we had a lovely distraction there. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> And I'm, you know, a typical guy, beer cart, you know, here we go. Anyway, um, the, what I was going to say was we, we talked to a lot of employers and a lot of the work that's being done right now. We're going to have several people on that are going to talk about employment. But one of the things that I talk to employers about, because I've heard the comment when I'm out there and I'm talking to, um, to groups and stuff, but employers go, well, you know what? You've got this guy and he's trained to drive a tank, but what does that do for my company? And you kind of look at him and go, well, one of the things it does is you're talking about a, a young person who is 19, 20, 22 years old, who has authority over a $20 million piece of equipment. He has authority over three or four other men on his crew. So he already knows how to work with people. He already knows how to problem solve. You know, if, if you want somebody that you can plug in like a widget, sure, he might not be your guy. But if you want somebody who's not calling you every five minutes going, you know what, I've got this situation. What do we need to do? I, no, our veterans are just going to go solve the problem. They're going to see what we're trying to accomplish, what your organization's trying to accomplish, and they're going to apply that skill set, and they're going to say, you know, this is what we need to do to get this done. See the hills, get, take the hill. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's really, really important because so many people, especially Vietnam, is still in their minds. And one of the things that I think is really kind of tragic is the press has turned against the veterans, turned against the military, and basically, if something goes wrong, man... You know, we we catch it. So I want to show these men and women who are doing so much for suicide prevention, not just for veterans, but nationwide, for leadership of major yep. companies, for all of these things. Now, now, you got me to talk about my experience and what I've been doing. I want to turn the tables. <laughs> we need to tell the Jim Blythe story. Talk about how you... Um, what you did, how you served, and then talk about how, how that's walked you forward to here and, and, and who you've worked with. Well, I'm third generation Navy. My grandfather was career Navy. Matter of fact, as a little kid, I wanted to learn how to, to do something, and he handed me a Navy Blue Jackets manual, and I said, Gramps, I can't read it. I was only about five years old. And so he started teaching me to read. My first primer was, in fact, a Blue Jackets manual, which is ridiculous. I wanted to be in the Navy, so I went to SMU. I didn't do well at SMU. I joined the Navy, thank God, and basically I did three combat tours on aircraft carriers in the Navy during Vietnam. I was in VA-163 and Lieutenant Commander John McCain at that time, who went on to be Senator McCain, was one of my pilots. My squadron led the attacks on North Vietnam, and we had 12 killed in action. So we're going to talk about that when we come back from these words from all of our partners. You're listening to The Veterans Impact Show with Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright. We'll be right back after these words. Okay, we're back on Facebook. No, we're okay, shutting hey, down. Facebook people hear the music? Uh, they, yeah. Yes, but not today because it skipped on me. So I've got to shut it down and start it over. Hey, Chris. 
It seems like we've got a lot of music to lead into before we go to the commercial break. <clears throat> oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, man, I'd give anything to get that show clock back. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. That really helps me to 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 pull it. <laughs> okay. Um, and going back to talking about this, Chuck. This is who you've got on, and this is who I'm shutting down. Well, John Stammerick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speak, speaking of Naval Academy grants. Yeah. yeah, he said thanks for the Staubach USNA shout out. And then there's Jason uh, Madden. Oh, my man Jason. Jason, you and I need to get together for coffee soon. And Rudy Wyatt. Not sure if I know Rudy. But we will. Yeah. We'll get to know. So please tell him sorry, I've got to shut this down so that we get the right mics on the right, you know, uh, so we get okay. the okay. We'll be right back. back. Yeah, bear yeah, with us we'll on be right back. His uh, services at two. Wow. Yeah, they're up in the, up in Frisco. Are we back? Are we back? We're back. back. Facebook. We're back. Facebook. Hey, We're back. Facebook. Thanks for hanging with us. Chuck Wright, the unbelievable Marine, and I'm Jim Blythe. Just another squib. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Facebook, we're going to be back on the live radio in just a second. So we want to say thank you for being on board and those that have shared. Really appreciate it. Go to our uh, Veterans Impact YouTube if you want to replay this and share it. Uh, Absolutely. Be, yeah. It'll, it'll, be on, it'll be on Facebook. Please like the page. Uh, here we go. You're fine. You got 20 seconds. Okay. Well, it's... Give us the the the, the direction. <laughs> All right, here's direction. Be quiet. <laughs> Ten seconds. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Well, thank you. And Chuck Wright, tell us a little bit about the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. So we, uh, so I got out of the Marine Corps, came back to Dallas. Uh, I started my own small company. Uh, and I kind of like a lot of veterans, you get out and there's a period of time you drift away from anything having anything to do with the military. It just, for some guys, it's six weeks some of them six months, some of them six years. Um, but as I started to have a little bit of success, and, and largely uh, when I got married, which will this year will be uh, 20 years ago, a little shout out to my uh, my best girl, uh, Michelle, listening in at the house, doing dishes and having fun. Um, one of the things she mentioned to me, I'd gotten a little bit involved in politics, which I'm, I'm actually using to help veterans now, uh, but um, she had made the comment to me, that she, and this was a little bit before you and I met, but she said, you know, you really seem to not have a lot of fun going to political meetings. It's very divisive, and, you know, there's a lot of people who care about power. They get into politics, people get into politics for two reasons. They care about power, or they care about policy. Well, I'm a bit of a policy wonk. I don't care. I don't get into the interpersonal power thing as much. Um, and I realized it left a really bad taste in my mouth. She says, you come back from veteran meetings and you are pumped up, you're excited. And so I kind of transitioned and I've, I've kept most of my, my political friends and that has paid off um, in a big way. But I've, I started focusing more and I got back in uh, to veteran work. And, and this is a commonality when we talk about people like Jake Wood who founded uh, Team Rubicon or Eric and I'm going to butcher his last name, who founded Mission Continues, who's a former uh, Navy SEAL. Jake was a Marine, uh, did some incredible things, and um, has since moved on from uh, Team Rubicon as the organization's grown so large. Uh, but an incredible organization. In fact, uh, there's a book out there called Charlie Mike, which was written by Joe Klein, and it talks about the two of them and how they kind of supported each other 
as they started two very different organizations. And I'll just talk real quickly. Team Rubicon goes into emergency situations. Uh, they were in Nepal when the earthquake hit. They started down in Haiti. Um, and I'll, I'll have um, I'll have the Team Rubicon guys tell the story because it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> Jake told me one time. He says, I kind of like your version of the story better than what actually happened. And I kind of... <laughs> Well, they came up with the name Team Rubicon. Um, but Eric's program mission continues. Takes uh, They create platoons that go into cities and they take veterans. Uh, and they go in and they try to make an impact in the city. And I know we, we've worked on, you mentioned EQuest before. And so what would happen would be we'd get an organization like EQuest, which was the Hoops for Heroes program, which is on the veteran side. And we'd get uh, Mission Continues would bring their, you know, at the time they had three platoons in, in Dallas and DFW. They'd bring a platoon down, and Team Rubicon would bring guys down. And we'd go down and do a service project, and we totally uh, redid a bunch of the stuff down there, and we've painted. I know Mission Continues went into a couple of inner city schools. And yet it was something as simple as repainting the school, yeah. the inside for the kids. And it just... And, and I thought about it, and I was like, wow, how powerful is that, that the kids come to school and it's, there's a story, it's a Hemingway story about a clean, well-lighted place, but people like to go, they don't want to go, oh, it's dirty, and it's dank, and it's, they want to go to a clean, well-lighted well, place. You, you want to lift up. Exactly. You want people to be lifted up. I think that's one of the, the things that when you see a man or woman in uniform, it's always crisp. It's always sharp. If it's not, you're going to go, what's going on here? Yep. And I think that, that we bring that to the table. I think that's what we bring. My experience in the Navy, my four years in the Navy on carriers, my pilots were exceptional. And what they imparted in me was a desire to fly. So I'm a private pilot. I own a plane. What they imparted in me was a huge desire to go back to college and get my degree. They taught me a lot just by their example of being our officers. Now, you've hit on something. I want to talk about that for a second and talking about being in the military. Um, and it, it's interesting because it's being part of something bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. But what's amazing about that is, is you realize how much internal growth that we have. And it's one of the things, and I'm going to try not to go too political with a statement, but one of the things that we see and one of the things we want to impart on fellow Americans is the power of the individual. And how do you make that person feel better about themselves? How do you make them feel more connected to society as opposed to we're isolated and we're sitting here and uh, we just had a cell phone sitting here and I've realized things like cell phones have, have got us connected to the entire world but at the same time they're isolating us and that's it's almost it's almost a conundrum how can you be more connected but more isolated and it's and again this is what my wife was talking about when she said do more with veterans. Well, you love that. You feed off of that. Yeah, and I think that one of the big things <clears throat> is that we encourage veterans to get involved in the Veteran Service Organization, yes. where it's American Legion, Marine Corps League, Navy League. I'm on the board of the Navy League here in Dallas, and I love being with those guys. And you know, but I'm, I'm going to say this, and I agree with you. Uh, I happen to be part of the Collin County Marine Corps League, and we have a very dynamic league. But a lot of our veterans, especially the post-9-11 guys, they don't want to be involved. Yes. It, it, because you create this image, and, and mine goes back to my dad was part of the VFW, and I don't know how many times I had to go pick him up because he was had too many drinks and couldn't drive himself home safely. Um and so I wound up with a fairly negative connotation, and I noticed that's really true. But there are so many other service organizations. One of the things about our Marine Corps League is we don't just get together. We do stuff, and that's critical. And well, other organizations we've mentioned, Team Rubicon, Mission Continues. You, you mentioned the, the kind of what everybody perceives as VFW. Yep. I'm a member of VFW. Lynn Toomer is one of our oh best my gosh. friends. Yep. He will be the state commander. 
Let me tell you something. He is changing VFW. And basically, they are getting Le- more Leave it to a fellow Marine. Leave it to a fellow Marine. <laughs> they are getting more and more involved in some of the schools, the junior ROTC. They've always been involved in that, but they're doing more. Yep. Your Marine Corps League, you've got the young Marines, correct? Uh, we don't do young Marines. We support young Marines. Well, yeah. Bill Davis, who runs Young Marines, is going to be on the show. He is a friend of mine through a golf tournament. We'll talk about that later. Okay. And in Navy League, we support the Sea Cadets. Absolutely. Great organization. Great organization. Boy, i got to tell you, Sea Cadets was started in 1963. I wish I would have known about it when I was in high school. I graduated in 65. And I think it changed. Oh, sorry. That was rude. One of the things, too, (laughs) with Junior ROTC, Navy League, I um, mean, the Sea Cadets, the Young Marines. Do you know that the graduation rate from high school is up in the high 90s, yep. 97, 98%, where the graduation rate in most schools is somewhere down in the 60 to 70%? I think Texas is generally running 70, 75% overall, but obviously as you get into um, the lower socioeconomic schools, uh, you're going to see that number fall and fall and fall, and, and, and that goes into another area that we won't talk about today, but things that our veterans can do. So I also sit on another state board. It's called One Star. It's actually the only state board that I sit on. Uh, I sit on a, a board, a committee, and then a local board in the DFW USO. So, yeah, my wife says that I get myself stretched a little too thin sometimes. And unfortunately, everything goes on for me in the first five months of the year. And then after that, my life kind of slows down more than a little bit. But um, that's okay. I love it. I absolutely love it. But um, One Star supports, it's called AmeriCorps. And it's been around since Clinton. It basically was created to replace the Peace Corps, which kind of went away. But it's kind of an American version of the Peace Corps. And we're out promoting that. And one of the things that we really look at uh, with that is getting our transitioning veterans, people that have just gotten out, especially the young people who aren't 100% certain what they want to do, and it provides them a stipend, but they go in, not unlike the mission continues, into areas, and they support on a full-time basis. Well, Chuck, if you take somebody who is 17, 18 years old, goes into the military, even somebody who's 21 or 22 graduates from college, and you get into our military culture, our framework, and you're there and it's very 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 structured very structured and then all of a sudden you're out of it <clears throat> that that transition is huge yeah. and so one of the things of being able to plug into veteran service organizations plug in to projects plug into doing things you then get to have the mission continues yep. you get to then have that camaraderie that you had in the military. You get to have that hands-on success. And I think you build relationships, without a doubt. Networking is the key to business. It's not what you know, it's who you know, many times. That's very, very true, and it it is something that, unfortunately, uh, as our military has become a smaller and smaller part, uh, I think during World War II, 20% 20% of the people in the country served. We are down to 1% of America serves. This scared me. I was talking to a recruiter. We're at the point where we're below 30% of these high school seniors are physically, mentally, and legally eligible to apply for the military. Really? It is scary. Um, And again, I go back and blame it on video games. I blame it on cell phones. Um, But I blame it on kind of this almost narcissistic idea that your little cell phone becomes your little two-inch square view of the world. Well, Chuck. Sorry, I I didn't mean to go negative. I spoke to a um, businessmen's group, a full gospel businessmen group that was all African, uh, Kenya. Uh, basically throughout Africa. And these men and women were all doctors, lawyers, accountants. They were professionals here in Dallas. And one of the things that got said to me is our African church 
is praying for the United States that its huge wealth will not corrupt it to the point that it loses its values. Whoa. We are the shining city on the hill. Um, and those of you who know me know that I am a massive fan of Ronald Reagan's. Uh, I think he was, he was my commander in chief. Uh, I think he is without question um, the best president that we've had in the 20th century. At this point in time, I'll throw in the 21st century too. A um, little bit of love to Teddy Roosevelt and some wonderful things he's done. Uh, and certainly Teddy Roosevelt walked the walk that we talk about of continuing the mission. Um, he did some amazing things for us as well. But Reagan made that quote, we are. We are the, the, the lighthouse for the rest of the world. Um, and I get it. America's not perfect. I, I'll make no bones about it. We've made our mistakes. But you know the one thing I will say, more than any other nation, no nation has worked harder to fix its mistakes. Boy, constantly that, striving to get that better. That is true. And and when you look at the makeup of our our nation and our Congress and all, <clears throat> we are constantly changing and evolving and improving. Yep. I think we are. And I think we're improving in attitudes. And I think that is important. And that's some of the things that I learned in the Navy. Yep. A lot of people say, well, Jim, what did the Navy do for you? It made me a man. It there changed me. The Navy was the best thing that ever happened to me, and the thing it was, I wanted to go in the Navy. My father and grandfather, who had served in the Navy during World War II, were literally terrified of Vietnam and World War III. So what could happen as a result of Vietnam? They didn't want me to go in the military, but that was the best thing that ever happened to me because it changed me. When oh, yeah. I came out of the military, yeah. I was a straight-A student. I graduated also from the University of Texas. I immediately got into business. By age 30, I was president of my first real estate development company. I think when you look back, those things that we learned, those things that we did, those things we experienced changed us in such a positive way. And that's what we want to highlight and bring forward, those people who do that. So here we go, Chuck. We're going to take a break and hear from all of our partners. This is Jim Life and Chuck Wright, and we are your Veterans Impact Show. We'll be right back after these words from all of our partners. Thank you for joining us. Oh, we're back on Facebook. Hey, Facebook guys, uh, thanks for hanging with us through the show. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we welcome uh, comments, suggestions, uh, remarks. Um, you know, you're 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 welcome to be uh, be as candid as you like. Um, we're going to morph this show to fit our audience, but we want to never lose sight of continuing that mission. And, and it's interesting you were talking about. I don't think anybody would disagree that from about 16 years old. To about 24, 25, young men, young women need discipline. Huh. They yeah, need to be, well, and, and it right needs in. to come from them. Uh, and, and some of some of people know my son is 18. Uh, he's looking at the path that he wants to follow. I am not pushing him into the military. Uh, although <laughs> he certainly has a lot of peer pressure about it. His uh, uncle is currently chief of staff at Quantico. Uh, his, his, um, my godson, um, his cousin who is very close, Greg, is currently in the Marine Corps, um, doing extremely well. In fact, we're waiting to hear if he got um, back into uh, recon school. He's committed, he's, he has completed his first deployment. Um, my dad, in fact, we trace our military service uh, back to the American Revolution on both sides of my family. Wow. <clears throat> well, I haven't gone that deep, but uh, let me tell you, uh, I was very, very close to my grandfather and my father, who were outstanding men. And when we had a holiday, Chuck, my Uncle John was at Bastogne in the 82nd. Wow. My grandfather was in some of the worst of the kamikaze battles in World War II in the Pacific, and he was executive officer of refueling ships. 
My father <clears throat> trained pilots in blind landing. My Uncle Bill uh, was basically a communications radio man in the Navy. We all, when we had a family get together, it was all military. But they weren't always telling, they weren't really telling war stories. They were talking about what they were doing. Yep. My Uncle Bill worked in the, uh, the, the beginnings of the electronics industry when they were using vacuum tubes, believe it or not. And hey, he, I, my, my helicopter had vacuum tubes. We, yeah. did, we didn't go all electronic like this new whiz bang stuff. Yeah. Hey, and one, one thing I want to say, Jim and I are talking a lot about what each of us has done. As we go forward, we're going to drill this deep into what's going on with those veteran service organizations. This is our first show with veteran and our first of the veteran impact shows. Uh, and so we kind of wanted to set the stage. But you're not going to have to listen to us. And, and, and we were on last week as we uh, we trailed out with the old show. And we had a guy who has written multiple books, great guy, but <laughs> I got off on tangents. And you'd have thought we were sitting at the bar having a few drinks and telling war stories. It got pretty funny. Uh, but it's not going to be the uh, Jim and Chuck show as we go forward. We are going to focus on what's going on. But we do want to set the stage and create the context uh, for where the show is going, how it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm um, excited about a lot of the guests we have. Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Well, Chuck, this is a blast to be able to restart this, to really get down and, and do things to help people. And we're talking about Absolutely. some of the people we want to bring in to talk about what they have done and how the military gave them the lessons they needed to be leaders. Some of the men like Jacob Schick, Clint Bruce, uh, many people who have done so very much in our community. For this nation. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. In fact, we're going to kick off. Um, let's go ahead and tease next week's show. Uh, we're going to have, so we mentioned Clint Bruce, uh, who with uh, Stephen Holly founded a, an organization called Carry the Load, which is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I have been a, a proud load carrier, load carrier since 2014. You and I have been involved with Carry the Load. Um, it is extremely meaningful. Their mission is to restore the true meaning of Memorial Day uh, to the country. As we kind of lose sight of it, it's it's the Indianapolis 500. It's uh, Mattress Mac having a big sale. Hamburgers and a cold beer in the backyard. Yeah, you know what? And that's, that's that that part I don't mind because and we we did this and I'll tell the story right quick. I, I kid Clint Bruce that he stole my idea. Um, <laughs> But um, we were two years into our house, been in our house 20 years now, 20 years Memorial Day weekend. And it, we were two years into the house, and I, I literally pulled the grill into the front yard. Uh, I, we grilled up about 100 hamburgers and 200 hot dogs. Um, we had a friend of ours had a um, um, inflatable balloon company. And we put out a, it was an inflatable slip and slide. It was the funniest thing. And we, we started it up at noon. And there were kids flying down that until 5 o'clock. We finally shut it down because we were flooding the street. The thing was hooked up to a hose, and the hose was running. And I didn't think about that. And went, oh, my gosh. But um, at 4 o'clock, we stopped. And we lifted a beer. But the one challenge I made to everybody was, I want you to say the names out loud. If you've been in the military, there is somebody that you've lost. Ours is a very dangerous profession, even when people aren't shooting at each other. Um, and I, But I want the names said aloud. And we went around a circle and we did that. And obviously, they're friends of mine. There were quite a few veterans in the group, but there were a lot of non-veterans. But it was... You know, there were some of them were like, you know, well, do we get to say anything too? It's like, absolutely. If you've lost somebody in military service, and we kind of expand that now to include first responders, because they're 
They're about as close as you can get to the military. In fact, they probably have some greater challenges than the military, but it's it's extremely important to do this stuff. Anyway, we're going to talk next week not so much about carry the load. We will talk about that a lot as we go forward. Um, but they have started a new program called Carry the Flag, which is going into schools and educating people about our flags, talking about what the words that a Star Spangled Banner mean. Um, and I think it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, my friend Debbie Wright, Cousin Deb as I call her, uh, all rights are cousins in my world. So if I refer to you as cousin, and your last name is Wright, well, that's the inside joke. But uh, Cousin Deb uh, is going to make sure we have one of their ambassadors on. And we're really excited about that show. Well, let's go to work on getting that together. So next week, carry the flag. Chuck, thank you. And Chuck, we always close with a prayer. So I want to say, dear God, thank you. Thank you for reaching out to all of us. But thank you for protecting those who are in the air, the sky, and on the sea that are protecting this country day by day. And thank you, God, for protecting our veterans as they come home and lead the way. This we pray in God's name and to many people who have many different names for God, thank you for being on board and thank you for praying with us. All right, amen and thank you. Next week, carry the flag. How much fun will that be? So, Chuck, let's be back next week, and then share with us on Facebook, share with us, and go to our YouTube. This will be posted on YouTube. We want you to be a, what is it, a spot or a subscriber. Subscriber. Okay. Subscribe to the YouTube, like our Facebook page. Please feel free to share it if you thought it was worth listening to. You bet. Have a really great day. This is your Veterans Impact Show. This is Jim and Chuck. We'll see you next week. I'm a daughter.